All right, I guess I'm going to get started since the room is full here, and hopefully those of you that are online and couldn't get in are online and can at least listen or catch the replay. Um, yeah, I think there was about 700 people that registered for the event, and when I saw the room, I said, this is going to be a lot of unhappy people, but it's fine. Um, yeah, so thanks, everyone, for joining and coming in person. They gave me lots of room, but you guys are pretty crammed in out there, so. There's only one person here. I'll explain a little bit about why Pavel's not here and, uh, and introduce him. He also was able to pre-record a few sections of the um, presentation, so you'll hear directly from Pavel. Um, my name's John McCowell. I work on Jaeger. Um, I'm the CTO at Logs.io. We're put them together service. One of the tools that we offer um, is Jaeger, along with Prometheus and OpenSearch. Um, and so I uh, spend a lot of time working, but when I'm not working, I try to be underwater. Some photos I've taken recently. Um, spend a lot of time diving. I live uh, near Miami, Florida. And um, yeah, a lot of work. I have Pavel's bio. That's why I'm pulling it up. And so Pavel here, so um, hopefully Pavel's colleagues. He's a senior software Oh, okay. For you? Um, you? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Lots of mics. Okay. Uh, so Pavel is uh, is a senior software engineer at Red Hat, working on distributed tracing and observability for modern cloud native applications. Pavel contributes to several CM CNCF projects, including Open Telemetry and Jaeger. And uh, Pavel spends a lot of time in the mountains, which is why you see these awesome pictures. Um, he's always sending me photos of him skiing and climbing and making his dog do uncomfortable things uh, in the mountains. So it's always enjoyable. Uh, Pavel's great to work with. Um, he's definitely part of the team uh, working on Jaeger and uh, great to work with him there and on open telemetry. So you'll hear from Pavel a bit and I'll also talk a little bit uh, through the presentation. Um, today we're going to cover a few different things. I'm going to talk about some of the basics. I'm not going to go into a whole tutorial about distributed tracing because you're going to get that in many of the open telemetry talks going on this week. Uh, I know my colleague Dotan is speaking tomorrow about open telemetry, um, but I'm going to go into a few basics just for context because uh, I'm sure many of you aren't tracing people and you're just trying to see what Jaeger can do for you and what this tracing thing is all about. Um, and then Pavel's going to go a little bit more deep into Jaeger and open telemetry and how they work together. Uh, I'm going to talk about a really cool feature, probably the biggest Jaeger feature that's been built in the last couple of years, is how we've integrated Prometheus into Jaeger. And you can now do application performance monitoring inside of Jaeger. Um, and it's nice to have the compatibility with the Prometheus ecosystem. Um, so I'm going to talk about that. And then Pavel will discuss the operator. He spends a lot of time, and obviously it's super important for those running on Kubernetes or OpenShift uh, to use the operator. And so he's going to talk about that. And then I'll touch on uh, the roadmap and where Jaeger's going for those of you that are using it and want to see kind of what the vision is and then we'll do some Q&A. So without further ado, I'm going to jump in here. Um, so a few semantics. When Jaeger was created, and it was a project created by Uber and then donated to the CNCF, it's one of the few graduated projects of the CNCF. So it's considered mature. It's been around for a while. It was actually built around open tracing, which is the predecessor to open telemetry. 
So some of the things in the UI and some of the semantics might use slightly different terminology, but I'm going to talk in open telemetry words because that's what you're going to instrument your applications with, and it's by and large very similar to open tracing. So the trace is basically, think about an end-to-end -end transaction that's going through a bunch of different microservices. And that's what the trace is. Each of those microservices and the pieces they're executing is a span. So even if you're not in a microservices architecture, anytime you're calling a service, which is calling a service, which is calling a service, you're going to get trace data. Um, and the span itself is basically the work that one component is doing in your application. Um, and then inside of the span, you can have a bunch of different types of data. Uh, but tags are extremely useful. So if you're running on Kubernetes, you can auto-populate the data about your Kubernetes infrastructure inside the span so that when you're troubleshooting a problem, you might say that a particular pod is having an issue because all of the transactions with that tag are showing an issue with that pod name. Um, so that's what the tags are used for. And people stuff all kinds of things into tags. You can even like stick a whole log message into a tag. It's not always the best idea, but uh, I've seen some crazy stuff. And people also will create a lot of different types of span data related to a trace because it's your code. You can essentially instrument and build out that visibility in any way that you want. So open telemetry supports a lot of different types of instrumentation from SDKs to APIs to auto instrumentation. And you'll hear about that in OTEL discussions and logs. So like another way to look at this visually, and I'll show you how it looks in Jaeger, um, is basically what we call this the root span. That's the first part of the transaction up at the top. And then essentially can cascade through asynchronously or synchronously. And as these things execute, you basically build uh, you know, a tree of what the trace looks like. And then another way to look at this is over time. So as I progress from left to right, what are the things that are executing? What things are executing at the same time? Where is there potentially blockers? That's really what tracing is useful for and to see where uh, errors, latency, or other problems are within uh, the trace itself. So in the Jaeger UI uh, here, we're basically just visualizing over time. This is a relatively short transaction, uh, 700 milliseconds, and then you can see where the time is spent. But a good example of you know, potentially some issues is when you see things that are stacked up like this, that shows that there's potentially ways that you could improve this by threading it or changing your application. Um, and then things like errors show up and you can actually drill inside the UI. Um, so that's basically how Jaeger visualizes traces. Um, and then obviously in this case, we're looking at you know, a front end service and then you can watch as it goes through the back end services. So it's just kind of an example. Um, so Pavel's going to explain a little bit about Jaeger and open telemetry uh, for a few minutes here in the video, and I will uh, touch on that a little bit later because it is an important part of our roadmap. So here is Pavel. Hello everyone, my name is Pavel, and in this part I will talk about Jaeger and open telemetry. First of all, I want to explain the differences between these two projects and ecosystem. And then I want to a bit more kind of explain or introduce you to open telemetry. And last but not least, I want to talk about integrations between these two projects. So what is the difference between open telemetry or OTEL, how we call it, and, and Jaeger? So open telemetry is all about data collection. It provides capabilities to to gather telemetry data from our applications, process it, and then send it to, to any kind of vendor of our choice. On the other hand, Jaeger is just a platform. It's a kind of a server that you can run on your machine or in the cloud, and it has API to ingest 
but as well query and visualize uh, tracing data. And, uh, you know, before, uh, I think, 2021, Jaeger ecosystem as well provided uh, the client libraries that we could use to instrument our applications. But this, you know, part of the ecosystem is now deprecated and the main purpose of Jaeger is just a platform right now. So a server that we can actually deploy somewhere. So let's talk about a bit more uh, about open telemetry. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is a different open telemetry uh, presentation at this conference, but uh, just for the context of this talk, I want to introduce you to open telemetry. Uh, and as I mentioned, open telemetry is all about the data collection and data collection is very complex and difficult um, problem because if you want to deploy, you know, if you want to do observability right, then we need to collect as much telemetry data as possible. And the problem is that there is too many, or not too many, but there is many programming languages and uh, there, is too, <laughs> there is too many or many uh, frameworks in all of those languages. And if you want to do if you want to understand what is happening, you know, in, in our applications, we really need to instrument all those frameworks. And this is a huge kind of job to, to, to do, right? Because there is just too many of those frameworks and, and for example, like database clients and whatnot. So this is kind of the first part of the open telemetry ecosystem is the instrumentation libraries for, you know, various RPC or database clients or for different uh, languages. The second part of the ecosystem is the open telemetry collector, which is able to receive data from those instrumentations, uh, the process the data and then send it to, to observability platform. And the last part of the ecosystem is a specification that basically standardizes what telemetry data should be collected uh, to be kind of consistent across languages and frameworks. So let's uh, now take a look at the kind of reference architecture when instrumenting the, the application. Uh, so on this slide, what we see on the upper part, it's user application process. So it's our application, in other words, and it is instrumented with some instrumentation API to collect tracing data. And then uh, this, you know, instrumentation code is then sending this data to the agent and collector. And finally, data reaches the platform. So for the instrumentation API, we used to use the open tracing API, uh, which Jaeger clients uh, used to implement. Uh, but this is now deprecated and we encourage our users to use open telemetry API and SDK to instrument the applications. And then for the agent and collector, uh, you can still use Jaeger agent and Jaeger collector but you have as well choice to use open telemetry collector as a replacement, especially for the Jaeger agent. For the Jaeger collector, you still have to use Jaeger collector if you want to use Jaeger, but in some scenarios you can use open telemetry collector and then send data to Jaeger collector, which will you know, store the data to persistent storage. So let's talk a bit more about open telemetry collector because uh, now maybe you are confused what is the difference between Jaeger and open telemetry collector. So OTEL collector is essentially a pipeline that can receive data in multiple formats, process it, and then export the same data to, to a different system. 
And Jaeger Collector is, is, is a lot different because it can only receive data in Jaeger or Zipkin format and then store it to, to persistent storage supported by the Jaeger platform, which is you know, Cassandra, Elasticsearch, Badger, or, or Kafka. An open telemetry corrector doesn't provide any storage or query capabilities. It just receives data, processes it, and then you know sends it to to a platform, which in our case is, is Jaeger. So in the auto collector, there is it's kind of the functionality is divided into three main components, which is the receiver, then processor to process the data. So for example, do PII filtering, data normalization or even export or kind of extract metrics from traces. And Jonah will talk about it uh, in, a, in more detail. And last but not least, export the data to a different system. So it's kind of like a pipeline, very flexible one that allows you to you know, process the data. What is super cool is that you know, a single stream of data, you can process it and then export to for example, to multiple systems. So you can keep some data uh, in, uh, or export it to Jaeger that you have deployed locally in your, uh, in your environment, but as well export the same data to, to an observability vendor. All right, so this is the collector. And now let's talk about the integrations between Jaeger and open telemetry. So first set of integrations is done in the instrumentations, so especially in the open telemetry SDKs. So as I mentioned before, the Jaeger client or Jaeger ecosystem used to provide Jaeger clients that we could use to instrument our applications. However, those clients are deprecated right now and we encourage users to use open telemetry SDKs and APIs. And to better kind of support migration to open telemetry, we have done a bunch of work on the open telemetry SDKs. Uh, and so the OTL SDK supports the Jaeger context propagation header or format. So if you are already using Jaeger clients and you are using Jaeger context propagation, you should be able to deploy new service instrumented with open telemetry and kind of make sure and use this piece of code that will make sure that the traces are not broken and the context propagation works across the old and new services. Uh, and the second integration in the OTL SDK is that uh, there is Jaeger Remote Sampler implementation. So if you are using Jaeger Sampler, Jaeger Remote Sampler, you should be able to use it with open telemetry SDKs as well. Now, let's talk about Open Telemetry Collector and Jaeger integrations. So, in the Autel Collector, there is Jaeger receiver that can receive Jaeger data in pretty much all supported formats. Then, uh, then there is Jaeger exporter that can export data to Jaeger. There is as well Jaeger Remote Sampler extension. So essentially you can just grab your sampling configuration from Jaeger Collector and use it in Open Telemetry Collector. And last but not least, uh, Open Telemetry Collector integrates with Kafka and you can configure it to use Jaeger uh, as a payload type. And the last integration is in uh, Jaeger query component or Jaeger query. Uh, so we have added Jaeger v3 query API, which is very similar to Jaeger v2, with one major difference is that the payload is not Jaeger type, but is, uh, it comes from open telemetry and it is open telemetry resource spans. I highly encourage you to take a look at this uh, query API if you want to query open telemetry data from Jaeger platform. Okay, thank you very much. And this is everything from the Jaeger and open telemetry integrations part. Cool. Thanks, Pavel. Hopefully he's listening, but 
He has one other section. You can hold the applause till he's actually done. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Pavel's done a lot of work, and I'll, I'll also talk about uh, where things are going between Jaeger and Open Telemetry because there's definitely overlap. The sampling implementation for those that are really into tracing that Jaeger allows for is a head-based sampling, but it's, it can be dynamic. And it was built at Uber specifically for them to change uh, instrumentation dynamically based on load or other types of characteristics. But it's predetermined at the beginning of the transaction, not at the end, like a tail-based sampler. So there's actually better sampling methods in open telemetry, but that's a whole nother talk uh, to have. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Jaeger and Prometheus in the new monitoring tab that's part of Jaeger. Uh, we're, we're always refining it, but it's been out for uh, many months now. So if you grab the newest version of Jaeger, uh, it's in there. And what it is, is it's basically, this moves Jaeger from a distributed tracing or debugging UI into a bit more of a monitoring UI and allows you to actually see operationally what's happening with your service. And APM is typically a combination of tracing and metrics together so that you can understand when your service is starting to show uh, errors going up or latency going up or some other characteristic that's showing it's unhealthy or having an issue. And this opens use cases for monitoring, alerting, and things like capacity planning as well. Um, w whether we're going to implement alerting in Jaeger, still TBD, uh, we'll see. Um, there's also a new uh, capability uh, that we built. It's actually, this is the old name, is Aggregated Trace Metrics uh, that we called it. Now it's called Service Performance Monitoring, SPM, in the Jaeger documentation. Uh, we renamed it a little while ago. But the idea is how do we integrate these two things together? Instead of building metrics in Jaeger, we just said everyone's using Prometheus. Let's make this uh, part of the way that people uh, already work. And then once it's in Prometheus, not only can you visualize it in Jaeger, but you can use whatever front end you're, you're used to using, probably Grafana for the UI. Um, so the thing that we tried to solve is how do we generate the metrics from the traces? Uh, this is where OTEL comes in. Um, so what we built is a processor. When Pavel was talking about the pipeline, your trace data comes in from the application. And then we built a processor, which is called the span metrics processor. And I'll, I'll have a link to that. And then the idea is you export the metrics from open telemetry into any format that you want. Even if it's not a Prometheus backend, you can export it. But in Jaeger, we only support Prometheus-based backends for the query side. And so this means, in our case, at my company, we use M3DB. But if you're using Thanos or Cortex or uh, Victoria Metrics or whatever kind of Prometheus backend, as long as it supports PromQL uh, and remote write, uh, it'll work seamlessly. Um, and then the idea is we derive the metrics from the traces automatically, and then we're actually able to store them and visualize them. So I'm going to show you how this works in configuration. This is a uh, open telemetry collector sample config. And uh, basically in here, you're, we're talking about that span metrics processor the, uh, up at the top you can actually define what kind of buckets you want. And so when you're looking at a histogram, uh, depending on how you want to segment the data and how you want to store it, uh, that's totally configurable based on uh, what makes sense for you. This is kind of the default buckets for histograms uh, that we've set up. And then down towards the bottom is the pipeline where you would uh, listen for Jaeger traces in this case. You would process it. Uh, and create the metrics. And then in the case of, uh, and then you would basically define the exporter. Now down here on the bottom, we can send it to Prometheus. You can send it to whatever backend you want. And uh, this essentially uh, will create that. And there's a link, uh, the presentation in PDF is in the SCED, the scheduling app. So you can always download it and the link will work that actually goes to the uh, collector 
uh, code base. Um, but this is part of the uh, contrib collector distribution uh, if you're using open telemetry. And so you can visualize it a couple of different ways. In this case, as an example, we visualized it inside of Grafana just to show you how you can use the histograms. Um, and then inside Jaeger, we created a new service called the metric query service. And that will query any PromQL uh, backend that, that understands the PromQL query language. And uh, today it supports, you know, whatever kind of backend I put a few examples um, and others can add. So if you, let's say, use uh, InfluxDB or a proprietary metric solution from a vendor, you could actually modify the metric query service to the vendor that you're using or the solution that you're using and, and it would still work in the Jaeger UI. So in the monitoring tab, there's basically a new little tabs that says monitor. And then basically we're visualizing, um, you know, the top services. Uh, and then there's a few out of the box uh, kind of columns that we're looking at here uh, that we've defined. It's relatively basic, but at least it starts to get people thinking about how you can operationalize trace data, which, um, not a lot of open source tools uh, can do. So uh, this makes it a bit more useful. Uh, and we hear great things from users. Uh, a lot of people have actually taken that open telemetry piece that we built and they're using it for all kinds of other use cases because there's a lot of useful data when you create metrics uh, from traces. Um, cool, and I'm gonna pass it back to Pavel to talk about the operator. He's done a ton of work on this over the last few years, and it's, uh, it's definitely one of the main ways that people are deploying Jaeger and deploying um, other parts around the Jaeger ecosystem. So uh, Pavel's gonna explain a short bit about the operator. Hello everyone, it's Paul again, and in this section I will talk about Jaeger Kubernetes operator. So Jaeger operator, it's essentially a Kubernetes operator that you can deploy in your cluster and it will take care of Jaeger configuration and installation on your behalf. If you are interested in the operator, uh, you can find the source code on Jaeger tracing slash Jaeger operator, or there's as well good documentation on the Jaeger tracing.io. So first of all, like why you should be using the operator instead of the plain Kubernetes manifest files. And the, the answer is the operator is kind of more sophisticated and is kind of smarter on, on how the Jaeger deployment should look like. Uh, and probably the biggest advantage for the operator is that it will help you with day two activities like upgrades, scaling and monitoring of Jaeger deployments. Uh, it's as well, the operator kind of as well automatically recognizes what you have installed in your Kubernetes cluster and as well like which distribution of Kubernetes cluster you are using. And based on that, it will kind of unlock features that are specific to that API platform. If you are for some reason cannot use the operator, then the Jaeger operator, you can use it as a binary to, to generate plain Kubernetes manifest files uh, from the given CR. Which brings us to the CR, uh, and I'm pretty sure that almost everybody here is familiar with the term custom resource definition. And on this slide, we see the custom resource definition for the Jaeger. Uh, and it is essentially a YAML file where you can kind of describe uh, how the Jaeger deployment or Jaeger cluster should look like. Uh, and we will take a look at, you know, parts of this CRD to kind of explain the operator features. And the first 
part that we will explain is the strategy. And uh, there, there are three strategies right now. The first one is all-in-one. In all-in-one all strategy, the Jaeger operator will deploy Jaeger as a single binary. Uh, and this single binary will then you know, talk to the persistent storage. Or you can even skip the persistent storage if you will use the in-memory option with Jaeger. The second strategy is production. The production strategy essentially splits Jaeger Collector and Curry into two separate deployments that you can scale independently. If you will hit scalability limits with this you know, deployment um, strategy, then you can switch to streaming that essentially splits or decouples Jaeger Collector from the persistent storage by putting Kafka in between. Uh, and this is by far the most scalable Jaeger deployment that you can achieve with Jaeger operator. So now let's take a look at how we configure the storage uh, in the CR. The storage, uh, you know, you can configure it in under in the CRD under spec.storage node. And there are two most important kind of configuration fields. First one is type where you can define which storage type you want to use. There is in-memory, Elasticsearch, Cassandra, Pager, even gRPC plugin and Kafka. And the second option is the options that is loosely coupled. Uh, and here we put the, the storage related flux for the given storage that we want to use. And you may ask the question, how do we find out which flags the Jaeger supports, right? Uh, there are kind of two ways that I can think of. Uh, you can either go to our documentation on jaegertracing.io or you can run the Jaeger collector or the query Docker commands or the binaries with the spent storage type set for your storage of choice and use the help flag and it will print you all the supported flags. So for example, in this CR, we are configuring the collector options and here uh, under the option node, we can put the all the supported collector options. Okay, let's take a look at another Jaeger operator feature that is uh, related to Jaeger agent. Uh, and the operator allows you to inject Jaeger agent into uh, your workloads. Uh, and for this, you have to, in the CR, you have to set the agent strategy to sidecar, which is default by, which is by default, so you can even skip it. And then if you want to inject the, the sidecar, then on the deployment annotations, you have to you know, provide this annotation with value either true that will you know, choose the right Jaeger instance where the data will be going, or you can set it to false to disable the injection, or you can here specify the Jaeger name that uh, and then uh, the Jaeger instance with this name will be used to send data to. The other agent strategy is daemon set. And in this strategy, Jaeger operator will deploy agent as a daemon set on every Kubernetes node in your cluster. Uh, last but not least, uh, the Jaeger operator integrates with uh, two operators. The first one is Kafka, uh, uh, which comes from StreamZ operator. And the second one is Elasticsearch, which comes from OpenShift cluster logging operator. And if you have this, or let's say Elasticsearch operator installed in your cluster, then Jaeger operator kind of will recognize that and it will it's able to provision Elasticsearch instance for you 
uh, when you will be you know creating a new Jaeger instance. And the same for Kafka. Uh, and the second integration is is monitoring of Jaeger operator. So Jaeger operator itself is instrumented with uh, Prometheus uh, for metrics and Open Telemetry for traces. So it's able to you know emit telemetry data, kind of uh, that will give you visibility how the Jaeger operator behaves and what it does. So thank you very much. And this is everything from the Jaeger operator part. So uh, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, cool. And uh, so I did want to touch on the roadmap. I know I'm running up on time, but uh, this is quite brief. So uh, I mentioned adaptive sampling, um, where there's this new sampling type. Uh, we recently, we're still working on this, but we're making some good progress and it allows for dynamic sampling control. Uh, this is something that, uh, that we came out with recently in open telemetry, which Pavel touched on. Uh, the service performance monitoring, which I touched on, that's also a new feature that's key. And then uh, we've actually decided as a project to really move towards open telemetry. We've gone through deprecation of the Jaeger clients and the SDK. Um, and that leads me to where we're going from there, which obviously has a lot to do with, with open telemetry in the second part here. But uh, we're, we're doing some work on the dependency graph. So those of you that are using Jaeger, there's kind of three different dependency graphs in Jaeger. They're all kind of mediocre or let's say not that useful. So we're actually gonna be normalizing these together and really creating a nice service topology view that's interactive, has metrics overlaid on it. So we're gonna really um, you know, improve the way that the, that the service graph, the topology view looks and what it does. And we also uh, are thinking about moving the calculation of that dependency graph, which today actually requires that you deploy Spark or Kafka streams, uh, potentially into the open telemetry collector. So there's some work going on there of how to calculate these topology graphs, and we're hoping we can do that in open telemetry and reduce a component in the Jaeger architecture. And then secondarily, which is the bigger one, is we're actually moving and Pavel's actually already built a POC of this, but we're gonna basically implement the Jaeger storage uh, exporters inside open telemetry and create a distribution of open telemetry that's basically a Jaeger collector. So the history of Jaeger is, uh, of open telemetry is that actually was a fork of the Jaeger collector that then had the stuff built around it. And now we're gonna actually bring it back in and make uh, Jaeger um, collector a distribution. And then another piece where there's active work going on is native support for open telemetry line protocol. So that'll allow you to write directly uh, to open telemetry from any, uh, anything that supports OTLP and we can take it into Jaeger uh, natively. So it's definitely more coming. Um, and I would a offer questions, but I don't know if I have time for it. Um, and I'm gonna put up a few links. Do I have time to take a couple questions? I think I do. So um, does anyone have a question? And I will bring a mic over to you. Hopefully this works. Yeah, you're good. There's a question about the service performance monitoring, would it also expose those metrics as Prometheus metrics to be scraped instead of being forwarded? Um, Just for simplicity's sake, because it's ca Because it's metrics. calculated inside open telemetry, uh, I don't believe you can scrape a collector, but maybe you can. So if you can, it would work the same way. It's working. Uh, another question. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Is that a strategy for handling uh, long-running background tasks as part of a, a trace? Or how do you handle that usually? Uh, it can cause 
you can do it, but the problem is that sometimes it won't visualize properly. Uh, so it's actually more of a UI problem, not a problem with the actual storage of long running traces. And part of it is the UI starts to look weird when you have something running for a week. It's like, what do you, it's gonna be like these little teeny things happening. So the UI is not really built to visualize traces that run over like days or many hours. Uh, but the data in the back end storage is there. So you could write your own visualization and use it totally. So there's no plan like to add some kind of linking between traces or? Uh, it is in the data, it's just not in the UI. So there's no plan to make the UI work with that. Okay. Um, cool. If you're using something like OpenSearch or Elasticsearch, you could do something in Kibana or OpenSearch dashboards to visualize it. And I know the OpenSearch team, which is open source, they're building some trace analytics capabilities that we're gonna be, that are going to be compatible with Jaeger where it might actually solve that. Uh, so I would check out Open Search. They have a trace analytics plugin uh, that might do a good job, and you can use it together with Jaeger um, soon. Not quite yet. Right now, there are two formats in the storage, but uh, they are going to support Jaeger format. Um, it's part of the plan there. So, yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, guess one more. Till they kick me out, I'm going to keep <laughs> taking questions. So I'm, I'm working on a rather unusual use case. I'm instrumenting a CLI app that has gRPC plugins. And I want to visualize the interaction between the, the CLI tool and its plugins. Um, what would be the minimal amount of open telemetry in Jaeger components that I need to ask the users to have available when they run this thing so they can ship me um, spans for debugging, for example? Like, do I need to? So you, you, when you build your tool, which is a CLI yeah. tool, you would instrument with an SDK yeah. in the tool, yeah. and that would emit the span data. Yeah, but the user is would off. have to have something to collect it. What would be the least the, amount of... Yeah, so you, I would probably... That's going to be tricky because the user might not be connected to the network, essentially, right? right? But they, could they collect locally and then ship me some sort of, like storage file or you could do something like that so when Pavel was explaining the all-in-one you can act there's actually a back-end called Badger that's an open source database essentially right. that Jaeger is compatible with and that actually is stored in a file Got it. so you Got could it. potentially store it as a Badger database locally and then they can send you the file and you should be able to visualize it with the Jaeger uh, query and the UI Got so yeah, that's, that's that might work for you for. yeah with Jaeger Sure. Thanks. Yeah. Sounds like a fun project. I guess I'll take uh, one more. Do you mind passing this back so I don't? Thanks. Regarding uh, tracing and metrics integration, uh, do you have exemplar integration on into your roadmap? Um, so it kind of depends on your back end. Uh, and that's more of an open telemetry thing. Uh, we're not going to visualize exemplars inside Jaeger UI, but you might get those inside, you know, Grafana UI, for example. Mm -hmm. So we're not planning on implementing it in Jaeger UI, um, but it sh it's supported as long as the exporter you're using supports it within open telemetry. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to visualize it. So, um, and I think, yes. Yeah, so there, there's a hyperlink in that monitoring tab that allows you to move from the service into a, an example trace of the service. So it's similar to an exemplar, but it doesn't use it from the metric data. It's inside the Jaeger UI because it knows that those things are linked together. Um, I think that's all the time I have for, but I'll be up here or tweet, message, and I'll try to answer the Q&A that was sent in online through our Slack channel. But thanks, everyone, for joining.